Silent Witch Fall 4, Balls Dance Arc. V4C1, Jairung Iron, Dance SFX, Azareth GT Silent Witch May 13th, 2021 6 minutes Lindsay Pale, a teacher at Sarandia Academy, 26 year old, bachelor, currently looking for a nice gentleman, was in a state of shock. She was a ballroom dance teacher. However, most of the students at Sarandia Academy were children of noble families. As a result, the students had already taken up ballroom dancing by the time they entered the school, and even though some of them were not very good at it, none of them had ever failed their exam before. Yes. It was until now. What on earth is the scene that unfolded in front of me? Thought Pale who widened her eyes. One couple dancing in front of her. The male student's name was Glenn Dudley. The female student's name was Monica Norton. Both of them were students who have just transferred to the second year of high school. I feel our tempo is lagging a bit, so let's speed it up, no -oh. Please stoop, the female student, who has no sense of rhythm at all, was being pushed around by the male student, who was pacing up at twice the original tempo, no, rather than dancing turning each other around, they're more like spinning around. It was nowhere near what you would call a dance. If anything, it was the image of a large dog running around it will and its owner holding the leash, being dragged around. The male student was hurling, twirling, and dragging the female student around. Then again, if you ask me if it is only the male student who has the problem, that is not the case. The female student was the same way. She didn't even know the basics of dancing and her steps were a mess. It was a miracle that they hadn't fallen until now. Eventually, as soon as the song ended, Monica Norton, unable to withstand the momentum of the sudden stop, rolled vigorously across the floor and eventually hit the wall, twitching. Running up to Monica, who has swirly eyes, Glenn shook Monica's shoulders and shouted. Oops, my bad. H hey, are you okay, P please, don't, shake me. To Monica, who had turned white and stopped moving, Glenn exclaimed. Please don't die, you're the one who put her to an end, was what everyone thought in the room. Watching the ridiculous exchange, Teacher Pale announced to the two misfits. Glenn Dudley. Monica Norton. I will have both of you take a re-examination in one week. Monica was one of the top magicians in the Kingdom of Riddle and one of the seven sages who had been granted the right to meet the king face to face. Two years ago, at the age of 15, she has become the youngest person ever to be chosen as one of the seven sages. She was the only existing magician to use non-chanting spells and was a prodigy known for having developed several new spell formulas. Have been ordered to secretly escort the second prince, Felix Ark Riddle. She then infiltrated Sarandia Academy. While secretly escorting the prince by making full use of her specialty of non-chanting magic, she was able to enjoy leisurely and splendid school life, or not. Although Monica has outstanding grades in the fields of magic and mathematics, when it comes to the other fields, she was at the bottom of the heap. A clumsy among the clumsy. One particular example of this was her terrible lack of physical ability. Just doing a run for a bit would leave her out of breath, and stumbling over nothing has become her daily occurrence. The fact that she had been holed up in a mountain cabin for the past two years after becoming the Seven Sages, almost never going out, only added to the decline in her strength. The end result of her ballroom dancing performance was a catastrophe. The ballroom dancing class was held jointly between the two classes which their partners were basically appointed by the teacher. That was decided so to make sure the students were paired up with those of similar abilities. Monica's partner was Glenn Dudley from the next class over. Apparently, Glenn was a student who transferred at the same time as Monica. Although that golden brown haired boy was a bit peculiar, he has a very friendly smile. Glenn was taller than most boys his age, and Monica who was smaller in that regard, had to look far up to see Glenn's face. Frankly speaking, the gap in their height made them unsuitable as dance partners, 
but the reason why the teacher chose them as a pair was probably because they were both transfer students, and their dancing skills were relatively unknown. My name is Glenn. Nice to meet you, Glenn said this with a friendly smile, but the best Monica could do was hanging her head down fidgeting. Monica's extreme shyness makes it difficult for her to have a proper conversation with people she has never met before, especially when it comes to men. Still, Glenn didn't seem to be offended and stood in the dance hall holding Monica's hand. His confident demeanor made Monica think that he must be a good dancer. But, in the next moment, Glenn said with a friendly smile, I've never done any ballroom dancing before. At least, I'm going to try to imitate what I've seen, you're lying, right? The second she thought of that, Monica was swept away by Glenn. Thus, they were both given a re-examination together. If this continues, they will inevitably fail at the re-examination as well. That's why they decided to borrow a room to practice dancing after school. Nevertheless, with two beginners, there was nothing they could do about it. So Glenn said, I've brought a helper, and dragged a certain person along with him. Oh. Hi, Glenn dragged in Neil Clay Maywood who had a troubled look on his face and was also a student council member like Monica. L. Lord. Maywood, while Monica widened her eyes at the appearance of Neil, who she regarded as the most kind-hearted student council, Glenn looked at Monica and Neil in turn, curiously. Huh? You two know each other, Miss Norton is also a student council member, like me, ee? -e? I didn't know that, Glenn exaggeratedly turned his head and gazed down at Monica. Glenn may not be a bad person, but his voice was too loud for Monica's ears. While she's shivering with fear, Glenn nodded his head in admiration. Monica is a transfer student like me, isn't she? And yet she's already become student council. That's amazing, no, that's, oh, I'm sorry for calling you by your name. But I'm not good at being formal, so please call me Glenn instead, um. Her, while Monica was struggling with her response, Neil calmly intervened, please leave it at that, Miss Norton's troubled, so don't press her too hard. When Neil said this, Glenn went silent like an attentive dog. Although Neil was a small and modest boy, he was well liked by the people around him. Glenn also seemed to adore Neil. Neil made sure that Glenn was quiet and smiled, lowering his eyebrows to reassure Monica. Glenn is a classmate of mine. He asked me to watch him practice his dance, so I agreed to be his temporary instructor. I am sorry, for the inconvenience, not at all. In times of trouble, we have to help each other, the smiling Neil, who said this exuded an aura of a good person from his entire body. That's why people love him. Well then, let's practice right away, to Glenn, who spoke impatiently like a dog that can't wait, Neil gave him a troubled look. If possible, I'd like your practicing with music like the real performance. And since I need to watch your dancing, it would be better if there's someone who could play the piano, there's a piano set up in the dance room for performance. During the exam, students have to dance according to the music played on. But Monica didn't have anyone she knew who could play the piano. Or rather, she didn't have anyone she knew well at this school in the first place. As Monica turned her head apologetically, the door to the dance room swung open. Well, I guess I don't have a choice. I'll play the piano for you if you want. It was Monica's classmate, Lana Collett who spoke quickly while curling her flaxen hair around her finger. Apparently, she was eavesdropping at the door. Glenn and Neil looked surprised, alternately looking at Monica and Lana. Are you Monica's friend? Yes. Nodding quickly at Glenn's question, Monica turned pale. Would Lana not find it annoying to be called her friend? If Lana looked uncomfortable or if she frowned even a little bit, while Monica shuddering at the thought of such a scene, Lana drew closer to Monica before ruffled her hair with pride. That's right. You should be grateful because I, your friend, is going to help you. Monica raised up her face timidly to look at Lana. Lana didn't look annoyed in the slightest. In fact, 
She seemed to be holding back her smile. Thank you. Monica squeezed her chest over her uniform and thanked her in a faint voice. She had a feeling if she didn't hold her chest, her heart would jump out of her chest with joy. V4C2, Nightmare of the Past Azeroth GT Silent which May 14, 2021 8 minutes So, Neil had told me about you. He said you're practicing your dancing, have been showing up at the student council room later than usual. Felix smiled and said so. Monica had completely forgotten to report that she was having dance practice after school, but apparently, the thoughtful Neil had notified Felix. Although he was low-key, he was quite capable. As he returned the quill he was holding to its stand, Felix cast a glance at Neil. So, how's the practice going? Can she pass the re-examination? Neil's gaze darting around even though it wasn't hot, his sweat beating on his cheeks. Well, I guess it depends on how much effort she put from now on, your highness, for the good-natured general affairs may want to go so far as to say that, it must be an absolutely appalling situation, Cyril, who was working on something else besides him, asserted in a stern tone. Monica couldn't say anything back but shrugged wistfully. What Cyril said was indeed true. Today's practice was a disaster. It was hard to say that any progress had been made. They started by practicing basic steps, but one out of every few times Monica would get her feet tangled and fall down. Glenn, on the other hand, seemed to have good physical skills and learn the steps quickly. Neil and Lana both said that it's best to learn these things with the body, but her body didn't seem to be able to pick it up. If there were numbers, I could remember them all so she was secretly lamenting, but Bridget, who was sitting by the window writing some papers, opened her mouth without moving her eyes from her papers. As a student council member who becomes the role model for the students, you should be ashamed of yourself, for falling behind in class, I am sorry, are you aware that you're also causing trouble for Lord Maywood, to Monica's trembling apology, Bridget spoke more sharply. Because of her, she's caused trouble for someone else, this fact sent Monica reeling. That's right, because of her inability to dance well, she was causing trouble for both Lana and Neil. Although in the beginning, Glenn was a bit of a mess, given his good physical skills, he would soon able to improve more than Monica. If that happens, what Monica did would only cause trouble for Glenn. If by any chance Glenn also fails the exam because of his partner, which was her. Um, I, I never considered you a nuisance, so, when the good-natured Neil said this and flustered, Elliot, who had been silent until now spinning his quill, interrupted him. Miss Bridget is right. Student council members are role models for the students. If there's a member who can't even pass a ballroom dance exam, it wouldn't set a good example for the rest of the students. Elliot's eyes narrowed in a dangerous light as he looked at Monica, smirking. At this rate, this will become a matter of His Highness's appointment responsibility, won't it? It was Felix who had appointed the outcast Monica as treasurer. So if Monica causes any problems, it would also be Felix's fault for choosing Monica. Because of her, she would cause trouble not only for Lana. Neil, and Glenn but also for Felix. The fear and pressure seemed to be crushing Monica's small body. I'm sorry for causing you trouble, I will work hard and do my best, so please forgive me. Such words were running through her head, but her throat constricted, unable to speak. As Monica tried to move her mouth, Felix said calmly. I told you before, didn't I? That if she ever made any mistakes. I'd take the responsibility, when Felix opened his mouth, the atmosphere in the student council room changed. Felix smiling gracefully before declaring. You have nothing to worry about, Miss Norton is the person I have chosen. I know she will live up to my expectations. Don't you agree? Miss Norton, the last words were directed to Monica, and they were accompanied by a wide smile. I can't do it, I just can't. So she screamed inwardly, but Monica swallowed her words just in time. Since Felix, a member of the royal family, 
told her that he had high expectations for her, Monica had no choice but to respond. However, she still couldn't not easily, instead remain face down, so Felix stood up and walked over to Monica. He then put his finger on Monica's chin and made her look at him. Mysterious blue eyes peered down at the languid Monica. You won't, let me down, will you? The slightly wistful voice would have made most girls blush. But Monica felt like she was a victim of blackmail, so she could only shake her head. Monica gathered up all the words she could find in her mind. A logical and clear explanation is important when stating one's intentions. F first of all. I need the analysis of the tempo of songs used and the matching of stride length. I'd like to start by analyzing and memorizing the angles of the feet, hips, and shoulders during the dance, at Monica's words, which seemed logical at first glance, but were not logical at all, Cyril with one his eyes half closed, lamented. Come a little girl, before you start using your head, try moving your body first, and that's the most plausible method. After returning to the attic, collapsed on the bed with her face down, Monica was sniffling. Having done the unaccustomed exercise had made her legs ache. Monica, you look like a haggard old lady, still keeping her face on the bed, Nero jumped on top of her back and squeezed it with his paw. Apparently, he was giving her a massage. Ugh. My whole body is aching, I heard early sore muscles as a sign of a young body. Good for you, she wondered where in the world he had learned such knowledge. Nero squeezed Monica's stick-like legs, which were devoid of fat and muscle, with his paws. I have been secretly watching you from the window, is it what that so-called dancing is? Does it mean that the person who steps on the opponent's foot the most wins? Ugh, no, it's not. You know, you've seen it in the illustrations of the novel. It was a shock to me because I only knew it from the illustrations. I had no idea dancing was such a tough competition. Nero jumped onto the desk and dexterously flipped the pages of the novel book he had spread out with his paw. Then he tapped at the sentence with his paw tensely. Comma Julia lets herself be swept away by the music. It was truly a dreamlike time. Holding each other hands, each step following their hearts. So these characters stepped on each other's feet with their hearts. Wow, that changes my interpretation of this scene, I told you it wasn't. Sheesh, Monica puffed out her cheeks before glaring at Nero, who teasingly wagged his tail. I mean, can't you just use a spell to deal with that kind of thing? You can use spells without chanting, right? Then, why not use a spell to secretly get better at dancing? the spell that makes you a better dancer. How good it would be if there were such a convenient thing. But spells are not all powerful. It is theoretically possible to manipulate the body to make it move in a certain way, but, that spell is forbidden in this country, using a spell to move a human body, or to temporarily strengthen muscles, was considered taboo in this country. Because human bodies were not resistant to mana. It can cause side effects such as mana poisoning. For the same reason, the use of healing spells was also prohibited. According to past experiments, just to close up a small cut, a large amount of mana was required, but it resulted in the death of the magician and the death of the person receiving the treatment due to mana poisoning. When Monica gave that explanation, Nero's whiskers twitched. Him? Wait. You say in this country? Could it be that spells were allowed in another country? Monica thought about Nero's question for a while. Nero wasn't familiar with the human situation, and it would be good for him to know what level of spells humans were capable of. Monica straightened up her posture and then said with a serious face, Physical manipulation, physical control, physical enhancement, and healing. All spells performed on the human body are treated as forbidden. All the magician skills on this continent are in agreement regarding it as forbidden spells, but, with one exception, trailing off her words, Monica put a little more strength into the fist she clenched in her lap. It's the Eastern Empire, the Empire, which bordered on the east of the Kingdom of Riddle, 
was the strongest and most vast nation on this continent. About a year ago, the emperor was replaced by a young emperor who was just over 20 years old, but this young emperor was not willing to accept old customs and has been implementing new policies one after another, one of which was the lifting of the ban on spells related to medical use. In other words, the emperor gave permission for a limited amount of research into the spell that affected the body. This policy was naturally opposed by the magician's guild in the empire. But then, rumor has it that the chief of the guild died in a suspicious death. In other words, things were looking a little fishy. I imagine that physical enhancement and healing spells will develop more in the empire in the future. The lifting of the ban on spells related to medical use in the empire had a profound effect on magicians in other countries as well. More and more magicians have abandoned their own countries because of their strict policies and moved to the empire. Losing talented magicians to other countries has been a headache for every country, and it has been discussed several times at the Seven Sages Assembly. Above all, Monica herself had her own thoughts about the lifting of the ban on spells that related to medical use. Humans have a lot on their minds, don't they? Nero slammed the cover of his novel shut and muttered to himself. I guess so, muttering, Monica closed her eyes. Behind her eyelids, she could feel a faint glimpse of her father's back. That night, Monica had a nostalgic dream. It was a dream where she watching her father's back as he sat at his desk. He was always doing a lot of difficult calculations, and Monica had treated his formulas as a picture book. Her father was knowledgeable. Mathematics, physics, pharmacology, medicine, he had studied all kinds of subjects, but biology was his specialty. Comma the human body is made up of a huge amount of numbers. If one could define humans with mathematical equations, they could help a lot of people suffering from diseases. That's why her father spent all his time researching, day in and day out. Monica didn't get to play with him much, but she still enjoyed reading her father's collection of books, and just being able to hear about her father's research once in a while was enough to make her happy. She was happy, but the scenery in her dream changed. Her father's back was engulfed in red flames, obscuring his vision. The sight of his father burning along with the huge amount of data and formulas that he had written down. Stop. Stop. Stoop. She wanted to scream, but the words were stuck in her throat and wouldn't come out. As Monica stood there, stunned, a man stared down at her. He was the second prince of this country a person perfectly fit with the white uniform of Serendia Academy. Felix R. Cridil. You won't, let me down, will you? Monica stared up blankly at Felix, who whispered those words with a sweet smile. This is a dream. Felix had nothing to do with his father's death. Today events and the memories of the past were just mixed up in a jumbled mess. Still, every time someone expects her to do something, the dark emotions she felt in the past tightened their grip on Monica's heart. It caused some faint anger to well up inside Monica's chest. How can they say that I will live up to his expectations? Even though my dad had lived up to their expectations, he wasn't rewarded. V4C3, having barbecue in the back of the school building is a man's romance. As Earth GT silent which May 15th. 2021 9 minutes the following day at lunchtime, Monica hurried out of the school building and headed for the backyard. Avoiding the old garden, which she had sneaked into before, because of the possibility of running into Felix, Monica moved to a secluded corner of the backyard. Then, making sure that no one was around, she took a piece of paper out of her pocket and unfolded it. On the paper, she had written down the basic steps of ballroom dancing and the tempo of the song. Monica reviewed what Neil had taught her yesterday and put it down on a piece of paper. After carefully rereading it, Monica immediately started practicing the basic steps. One, two, three. One, two, three. It was just a matter of repeating the same steps, but when Monica, who has poor athletic skills, did it, 
Her upper body would wobble unsteadily. Even just doing that was difficult for her. Let's see. Put my right foot forward. Take my left foot out to the side. Put it back in. Then, turn clockwise with my left foot as the axis. When turning around, losing her balance and stumbling, she heard a burst of laughter. Her shoulders jerked involuntarily and she looked up to see a tall young man looking at Monica with a smirk on his face, wondering how long he had been there. He has reddish-brown colored hair and droopy eyes. The young man who looks so friendly when he's not talking was the student council secretary, Elliot Howard. No wonder it was this terrible. Your dance almost like a drunk person. Elliot's demeanor was friendly and easygoing, but his eyes were clearly looking down on Monica. Although they were the same student council members, Monica had not talked to Elliot very much. However, she had a vague feeling that Elliot did not have good feelings for Monica. If Bridget's sharp words were like a sword, then this person's words were like poison. She can feel his malicious intent slowly tormenting Monica. Have you not ever attended a ball before? No, I haven't. Ha ha, I guess it's natural. That kind of dance couldn't be displayed in the public. After all, Elliot spat out his poison, with a soft tone and a soft smile, as if he were making chit-chat. Monica was stood there shriveling, while Elliot slowly closed the distance between them before looking down at Monica's face. You're not a noble, are you? Most likely you're a child born from a nobleman's mistress, right? I guess that's not too far off the mark. <laughs> she wondered what kind of setting Lewis had devised. As a matter of fact, it was so complicated that she couldn't remember much about it. If I recall correctly, I was an orphan who was adopted by the former Count Kelbeck's wife, right? At any rate, it would be best not to say anything inappropriate. When Monica silently looked down, Elliot seemed to take it as a bull's eye. Serendia Academy has become an extension of the social circle. And student council members are the flower of the social circle. As the second prince, Felix has chosen the members of the student council. It's no exaggeration to say that the student council members are his future aides or potential wives. In such a gorgeous place, Monica was a thorn who blended in. Nobles have their own roles and duties. To be honest, I don't like the idea of a commoner with no aspirations mixed in. Reaching out his hand, Elliot picked up Monica's badge from her lapel. He then tossed it up high into the air. A small badge that proved her membership, fell with a thud onto the decorative part of the roof of the school building. It's far too high for Monica to reach. Come on, as Monica stood there. Elliot sneered at her. I have never heard of members losing their badge. Stripping off your position might be inevitable. Elliot shrugged his shoulders dramatically before looking down coldly at Monica. Glad to see you understand your place. Miss Commoner, after Elliot walked away, Monica was looking up at the school building with a troubled look on her face. Her badge that fell on the roof of the school building can be retrieved by using flight magic but it will be difficult for Monica, who can barely leap high enough, to do so. Above all, if someone found out, it would be a disaster. W what do I do, would making strong wind with a wind spell make it fall off the roof? However, if the wind accidentally blows away from the roof as well, it will be a disaster. When she thought about calling Nero to get it for her, someone tapped Monica on the shoulder. What's the matter? Yes, as Monica turned around, cowering, she saw Glenn Dudley standing there. For some reason, Glenn was holding a wooden skewer in one hand. Don't tell me he's going to kill me by stabbing that wooden skewer to my neck or so Monica thought as she stared at the wooden skewer that Glenn waving like a baton before saying. What are you doing out here, um? Her, as Monica was at a loss for words, Glenn stared at Monica's lapel. Hey, your lapel is a little loose, isn't it? Ah. Uh, where's your badge? Did you drop it? Monica replied hesitantly to Glenn, who started to make a lot of noise. Um, my badge, was got stuck, on that roof over there. 
It was a rather lame excuse. But Glenn didn't pry any further. He placed his hands over his eyes and looked up at the roof. Do you mean that roof? With that decoration? P probably. Somewhere around there. Then it's easy. As Monica widened her eyes, wondering what he meant by it's easy, Glenn was. Hold this for me. Then gave her a wooden skewer that he was holding. Then, after snapping his neck, he chanted a short incantation. Monica's eyes widened. What Glenn was chanting was a flight magic spell. When Glenn kicked the ground with a light here we go, his body leaped immediately to the height of the roof. Maintaining that height, Glenn's body moved horizontally approaching the roof. Found it, peeking up the badge on the roof, Glenn descended slowly from over four stories building and landed in front of Monica. The flying spell was a high-level spell that can only be used by an advanced magician. Above all, it required both magic knowledge and physical ability. Monica was surprised at how easily Glenn used it, and Glenn put the badge in Monica's hand before putting his index finger to his lips with the SHHH. Don't tell the others about that, okay? In fact, I've been told not to use magic without supervisor permission. Um, are you a magician? Glenn, I'm still an apprentice, though, even as an apprentice, being able to use a flight spell means that he was as skilled as an advanced magician. Why would such a person be at Serendia Academy? If he could use a flight spell at such a young age, it would not be surprising if he was recruited by Minerva, an institution specializing in the training of magicians. Unable to say such a question, Glenn picked a wooden skewer from Monica's hand. Oh, I was just about having my lunch. Would you like to join me? Now that he mentioned it, she could smell some kind of meat being grilled. Waving the wooden skewer in a good mood, Glenn walked deeper into the backyard. Fearfully following him, she found the remains of a bonfire in a slightly open area. On top of a leaf, which served as a plate, was a skewer of roasted meat. Apparently, the wooden skewers were used to skewer this meat. You know. This school's cafeteria is kind of uptight, and besides its high price, the portions are too small, so it was not enough to fill my belly. T that's why, you grill some meat here, when it comes to meat, freshly butchered is the best. Besides, I won't have energy if I don't eat my fill of meat. With that, Glenn offered Monica one of his skewers. Unable to say no. Monica thanked him and took a bite of the meat without hesitation. The chicken was grilled just right, the skin was crispy and the meat was moist and tender. The spices were also spread evenly which was good. But where did he get this meat from? Earlier, Glenn seemed to have said something like freshly butchered, but he couldn't have been hunting during the break, could he? In response to Monica's puzzled expression, Glenn answered as he chewed on the meat. My family owns a butcher shop in the downtown area. I flew in with my flight spell to pick up the meat from my parents' house. Oh, don't tell anyone I went to my parents' house. Don't tell anyone, okay? Absolutely don't tell anyone, okay? Although she had suspected it for some time, Glenn seemed not from the noble family. But why would a butcher's son, an apprentice magician, who was not from the nobility, Enroll in this academy? Um, why did you decide to enroll in this school? Glenn, hmm, I have a master who teaches me spells. My master told me that I was too restless, so my enrollment in this school was to learn how to behave. Although Sarandia Academy was built for the children of noble families, it was not uncommon for children of semi-aristocratic or wealthy families to enroll their children in the school to learn some mannerisms. Nevertheless, if someone was as talented in magic as Glenn, attending Minerva, the pinnacle of magician training institutes, should be a natural choice. I wonder who is his master. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the badge for me, and also for the meat. In times of trouble, we should all help each other, Glenn smiled pleasantly, showing his white teeth. Looking at his carefree smile. She felt that her dislike for him had faded a little. Him? 
Felix watched the exchange between Monica and Glenn in the backyard from the window and squinted a little. He had seen the entire exchange, from Monica secretly practicing her dance moves to Elliot stealing her badge, to Glenn retrieving it with flight magic. Come your highness, Will, the white lizard, peeked out of his breast pocket and whispering to him. I have been listening to some of the conversations, and looks like there is no connection between Monica Norton and Glenn Dudley, yeah, I guess so. She was quite surprised when Glenn Dudley using a flight spell, after saying that much, Felix let out a sigh with a languid look on his face. Still, it wasn't funny. Why are all of them ganging over bullying my little squirrel? I believe it's because your highness is also bullying her. Shall I put a collar on her so as to let them know she's mine? Maybe a pretty ribbon with some embroidery on it will do. I think that would be looked bad on you. I have got the same feeling. Giggling, Felix covered his breast pocket with his hand. As a signal for him to hide, Will withdrew deep into his pocket. After confirming that Will had withdrawn, Felix turned his gaze behind him. The person walking towards him was the student council secretary, Elliot Howard. He was the one who had just taken away the badge from Monica. Felix had anticipated him to walk through this corridor to get back to the classroom, so he had taken the trouble to wait here for him. When Elliot noticed Felix, he lifted one hand in a friendly manner. Yo, your Highness. Oh, Elliot. Did you have fun playing with the little squirrel? Elliot didn't seem to be upset and looked at Felix with his usual frivolous smile plastered on his face. That's the very typical attitude of an aristocrat. Say, your highness. I think you already know that I really hate commoners who don't know their place. Elliot Howard may pretend to be a frivolous man, but his nature has always been more aristocratic than anyone else. It's not that Elliot looks down on the commoners. It's just that he can't tolerate people who do not fulfill their duties, whether they were nobles or commoners. Felix was aware that Elliot was the one who was more upset than anyone else about the previous accounting irregularities. You once said, didn't you, Elliot? Nobles have their roles, common people have their roles. Each of us should play a role according to their standing. Yeah, I did. That's why I'm asking you. Elliot retracted his frivolous smile and looked sharply at Felix with his drooping eyes. Why did you make Monica Norton the treasurer? Because I don't know where Miss Norton's standing is. Elliot argued that common people should play roles that fit the status of common people. Felix, however, could not grasp Monica's standing. That's why he assigned her the role of treasurer. He thought that by doing so, he might be able to grasp her true nature. Elliot did not seem to be satisfied with Felix's answer. Still, he did not pursue the matter any further and turned his cold eyes on Felix. Do you know what I hate more than the common people who don't know their place? And nobles who don't do their duty. That goes for royalty as well. Felix was not offended by his disrespectful attitude towards royalty and replied with a gentle smile. Of course. As long as I call myself Felix Ark Riddle, I will fulfill the duty of my role, right, as long as I carry this name. With eyes that seemed to be looking somewhere far away, Felix whispered faintly to himself. V4C4, it ended well all thanks to the embroiderers. As Earth GT silent which May 17, 2021 11 minutes the day, two more observers came to the after-school dance training. They were Felix Ark Riddle, the student council president, and Sarah Lashley, the vice president. When these two appeared, Lena's cheeks turned rosy and squealed in high-pitched voices, while Monica screamed in terror inwardly in pale expression. As for Neil, he looked at Felix and Cyril awkwardly, while Glenn said loudly, Who are these people? And they were some big figure. W.I., W.S.Y. Your Highness, H. Here. When Monica said this in a low voice, Felix furrowed his eyebrows and gave her a look of disbelief. I'm not so heartless as to have expected you then only to throw you out later, okay, right, you should be grateful for your highness's generosity, Cyril then stuck out his chest proudly. 
Are you okay came here leaving your student council work behind? Or so thought secretly Monica when Felix glanced at Cyril. By the way, I don't remember having called you here, Cyril, I'm your highness's bodyguard. It is only natural that I should accompany you along, I see. So you've been getting your student council work done ahead of schedule even before I told you I was planning to come here. You were planning on coming to watch Monica practice from the beginning. And even if I didn't show up here, you're planning to come here, weren't you? For some reason, Cyril embarrassed at Felix's ridiculous remarks which made his gaze wander. W.L. As your right-hand man, I had anticipated some of your highness's plan. After all, Monica was secretly impressed by the fact that the vice president had to always be ready for the president's whims. However, to be honest, this situation did not make Monica happy. In fact, it has become a burden on her mind. As Monica's stomach knotted up in anguish, Lana was shaking her shoulder. Hey, look at that. Student Council President and Vice President are standing side by side, so close together, Lana's exuberant was probably the correct reaction of most of the girls, so thought Monica. Look at His Highness scarf embroidery, such delicate and beautiful needlework. It's definitely the work of a master craftsman. The colors of the embroidered thread changes depending on its luster, and also those embroidered vine patterns. They will definitely become a trend. I need to burn it in my memory, and if possible, I would like to draw it down. Ah, look at the lace on the edge of Lord Cyril's gloves. That's not something made without the latest technique. I'd like to see it up more closely. What Lana was staring at was not the faces of Felix and Cyril, but their clothes and accessories. Perhaps Lana was also a little different from what most schoolgirls think. While Monica was dumbfounded at that thought, Felix was encouraging while saying to her, How about showing your dancing first, with a smile? Monica did as she was told, standing in the middle of the room before holding Glenn's hand. Lana hurriedly sat down at the piano and began to play. Neil clapped his hands along with the music. All right, I will start with a one, two, three as a signal. Okay, one, two, three. Monica and Glenn took their first steps at the same time. It wasn't a bad start. This was because Monica was less nervous around Glenn than she had been yesterday. However, after a few repetitions of the steps, their rhythm started to go wrong. Stop. Cyril was the one who raised his voice. Ah, she sure her dancing had ruined the dancer so thought Monica shrinking into her shoulders. Lana stopped your music and Cyril glared at Glenn sharply. Glenn Dudley. You are not escorting her properly. You had better learn to control your manners towards girls. It was a very unbelievable statement from someone who abuses Monica on a daily basis. Monica, who had been expecting that she would be the one to be criticized, widened her eyes in disbelief. On the other hand, Glenn, who had been ruined the dance complained, with his lips pursed in a boo-boo. I've been treating her carefully though, in the first place, you haven't even properly asking her for a dance. Watch me over there, Cyril pushed Glenn away haughtily before staring down at Monica, who was scared out sniffling. Looking at the flow, surely Cyril will be Monica's dancing partner, right? If I accidentally stepped on his foot, he might shove a block of ice to me. Or so Monica shuddering at thought of that when Cyril placed his left hand behind his own back, bow gracefully, before reaching out his right hand. Will you dance with me, young lady? The Monica's thoughts froze at the graceful bow and the dialogue that didn't seem to belong to Cyril. Standing there in a daze, Cyril reached out and took Monica's hand with as much care as if he were touching a delicate piece of glass. As soon as Lana started to play her music, Cyril lightly put his hand on Monica's waist. By the movement of his hand, Monica subconsciously understood that the dance was about to begin. Even without a signal 1-2-3 like she did with Glenn, she knew what to do as it natural. She even knew the timing of the first step. As if lured by Cyril's hand, Monica stepped forward, 1, 2, 
three, one, two, three. Too busy worrying about her steps, Monica's upper body movement inevitably became a mess. But when Monica's back and arms started to do a wrong move, Cyril's hands supported her to get into the right position. The same goes for the direction of travel. If it was Glenn, he would say, let's go to the right, then we're about to run into a wall, so go that way, to indicate the direction of travel of Oakley. But Cyril didn't guide Monica with his words but with the movement of his hands, his feet, and his gaze. Comma and for her, it was surprisingly easy to dance with. After the music was over, Cyril gave the same beautiful bow as when he started. He then raised his head to look at Glen Ann. Did you see that, kid? This is what escorting is all about, he yelled at him, looking proud of himself. Far from being when he's dancing, he was the usual Cyril Ashley that Monica knew. Monica couldn't help but mutter to herself. I was relieved to see that Lord Ashley was still the same as usual. What do you mean by that? After Cyril glared at Monica, he coughed. You could say that ballroom dancing is entirely dependent on how the male doing a lead. If the male leads properly and matches the timing to the music, the dance will look good to some extent. At Cyril's explanation, Glenn cheered honestly. Oh, that's awesome. When you're going to compliment someone, you should use better vocabulary and compliment them with a word of decency. Cyril seemed less than pleased but still maintained his cynical attitude. Glenn pondered about use better vocabulary for a moment, then opened his mouth with a serious face. Your movements went like whoosh, swish, and snap, and it was cool. Before you learn etiquette, you should learn the human language. Cyril gave Glenn a half-hearted glare, and now he looked at Monica. Monica Norton. Your dancing needs a lot of work. First of all, you need to get used to being escorted. Don't freak out every time. Don't hunch over. Don't look down. A few missed steps will go unnoticed as long as you keep your head held high. Why yes, Cyril's point was something that both the teacher and Neil had said to her. In any case, her habit of hunching over and looking down, caused Monica to always take a bad posture. Now that he mentions it. At the rehearsal for the Seven Sages ceremony, Lewis pointed out to me that I was hunched over. I remember having a pole tied to my back. The memory of him saying how about I tie a pole to your back next time, with a smile, still made her shudder even until now. While she shuddering after recalling that memory, Felix proposed smilingly. In that case. Dudley should practice being an escort and Miss Norton should practice getting used to being escorted. Cyril, can you teach him how to be an escort, if your highness insists? Cyril nodded grudgingly, then turned to face Glenn before saying with a raised eyebrow. Now, kid. I will teach you my escorting skills. First, you will escort me as if I were a girl. Well, treating you like a girl was a bit hard. Stop being so picky, as Cyril scolding and dragging Glenn away, Felix smiled at Monica. Since that is the case, please take care of me. Miss Norton, P please take care, of me, too. As Monica bowed her head perpetually, Felix quickly reached out his hand to Monica. Grab my hand, without taking a single step, Monica stretched her arm to its limit. Then. She touched Felix's outstretched hand with her fingertips. Felix looked down at her fingertips with a smile on his face. I guess you're surprisingly unwilling in being escorted. Huh. No, I don't mean like that. I am so sorry. Felix was smiling, but his eyes were not. Shakily, Monica took a half step forward. Then Felix quickly grabbed Monica's hand and pulled her toward him. Felix's hands were supporting her body, and the moment she thought about that, Monica's body tensed up. You know, when you were with Cyril, you were a little more docile in being escorted. T that's, because at that time, Lord Ashley was different from usual. I was so surprised. So, at that time, she was too stunned by Cyril's conduct when dancing, and the dance had started and ended before she realized it. But now, the situation was different. 
As Monica stiffened, Felix looked up and instructed Lana. Excuse me. Can you play some music for me? With a slightly lower volume. Yes, sir. Lana nodded excitedly and began to play the piano. As the music played a little more subduedly than before, Felix took Monica's hand to lead the way. It was the same as with Cyril. Even without the call of a 1-2-3 signal, she could somehow understand when to start, probably because Felix was also great at escorting. You don't have to pay attention to your steps right now. Maybe you could forget about your dancing altogether. A. You could walk around at your pace while having fun chatting with me. Your body easily stiffens. After all, the idea of having a nice chat with someone really threw Monica off. Monica was not very good at talking, and she was not very good at bringing up topics of conversation to anyone. Since she never had a chance to make a casual conversation. When Monica frightened and clammed up, and Felix smiled at her. I've never seen your eyes up close before. They look light brown, but when exposed to light, they seem to have a slight greenish tinge. They look like the trees deep in the forest illuminated by the sun, doesn't it? Um. Her, your light brown hair is also very shiny and beautiful. Did you have a friend braid it for you today? Why yes. Um, Miss Lana Collette is very good at this kind of thing. Yeah, it looks really good on you. When someone complimented her hair, she was happy because it was like a compliment for Lana. Monica giggled, her cheeks relaxing. Kama ehihi. Thank you, very much, Tim, so you can't even smile like that. Hey, can you show me more? Being stared at so closely, Monica felt embarrassed and lowered her eyes. Then the scarf on Felix's lapel caught her eye. I think Lana had mentioned something about the embroidery, and it was indeed quite intricate. If one looks at it from a distance, it's not that spectacular, but when one looked closer, it looks more luxurious and intricate. Monica loved to look at the beautiful patterns. If I look at the pattern of this fine rose, I could think of it as a circle, and since four circles are inscribed in another larger circle, with that particular set of principles, along with the distance between roses. I think a green dress would look good on you. Something a little deeper, but not too dark. Maybe a beautiful flower embroidery on the skirt would be nice. Do you have a favorite flower? Two circles that do not intersect each other have two common tangents. And each of them has the same distance, with that assumption. It can be applied in multiple magic formulas with a wide range of magic coordinates. Ah, autumn roses look good, too. It's smaller and more elegant than the large roses that bloom in summer. I think its common color would suit you better. The radius of the four circles is infinitesimal and the length of the tangent line has an equal distance between them, but considering the development of the scope of the wide area magic formula. The music stopped. As Felix stopped his steps still supporting Monica's body, Neil who had been watching the scene, clapped. Amazing. From halfway through, the dance became a proper dance. And Miss Norton's movements were more relaxed and less tense. It's the best dance I've ever seen. Miss Norton was doing her best to learn the steps with her feet, but her movements tended to be stiff and her tempo slipped because she was thinking too hard, Felix said, looking into Monica's face with a smile. I guess enjoying a good chat had allowed them to move on their own devices without thinking about any unnecessary things, is that right? Upon being spoken to, Monica raised her head and looked around as if she had just woken up from a dream. Ah. Um. Her. Monica. Monica. You were dancing so well just now, Glenn, who had been watching Monica's dance from halfway through, praised her with a sparkle in his eyes and Cyril nodded his head in agreement, saying, as expected of his highness, his escorts was the best, Monica held both cheeks, like still fluttering in her dream. Dot. I was able, to dance, yeah, you danced very well, at Felix nod, Monica's face lit up. She had a big smile on her face, something that Monica rarely shows, as she usually keeps her head down and squirms. 
I... I just realized, the pattern on your highness's scarf could be replaced with a different set of patterns. And this set of patterns is very beautiful and applicable in many ways. Just thinking about how to apply this helped me stop thinking about unnecessary stuff. A heavy silence filled the dance room. Like an innocent child, only Monica was the one who has sparkles in her eyes. Then, a kind-hearted Neil interrupted her fearfully. Um. I think, in a roundabout way, that kind of thinking was the epitome you were thinking of the necessary things. Ah. Monica's smile stiffened as she slowly, slowly glanced over at Felix. Felix was still smiling. Albeit, his blue eyes shone darkly. Was our little chat kind of unnecessary things for you, Miss Norton? Um, sir, well, I mean, it just... Monica paled quickly, clenched her fists, before shouting. The only reason I was able to dance so well was thanks to your highness's scarf. You should have said, thanks to your highness here Cyril's angry voice echoed through the dance room. Thus... Monica learned how to perform a dance without getting nervous by immersing herself in her thoughts. It should be noted that the pattern on Felix's scarf, which Monica had been gazing at intently, was accurately drawn before it shown to Lana, who was greatly appreciative of the result. The 4 c 5 Under the Surface Warfare Azeroth GT Silent which May 18, 2021 4 minutes there are several tea rooms provided in the Sarandia Academy. Among them, there's a private tea room that only a few special students can use, which was now used as a location for today's tea party. The event was hosted by Bridget Graham, the daughter of Marcus Shieldbury, the secretary of the student council. And there was only one guest who was invited. He was the student council president and also the second prince of the kingdom of Riddle, Felix R. Riddle. I heard Miss Monica Norton has passed her ballroom dance re-examination, after announcing that in a casual tone, Felix took a sip of the tea that had been prepared. Bridget, who was also elegantly sipping her tea, took the cup off her mouth before putting it back on the saucer. That's good to hear, I thought you wanted Miss Norton to be failed. So I had assumed that you would be happy to denounce her if she was failed. Why would I be happy if there's a failed member in our student council? A truly exemplary answer. Bridget, one of the three most beautiful girls in the school, looked at Felix inquiringly, wearing a thin smile on her beautiful face. Speaking of ballroom dancing, it brings back memories. Do you still remember practicing ballroom dancing with me when we were a child? And you've been an outstanding person since that time, I remember that your highness was not very good at practicing dancing, and kept apologizing for stepping on my feet, Bridget covered her mouth with her fan, peering her eyes at Felix. It was as if she was trying to ascertain his reaction. Felix gave her an embarrassed look as if he was ashamed of his poor performance in the past. Suddenly you're talking about the past. What's the matter? It's rare for you to bring up this topic, there are times when I reminisce of the good old memories, however, while the two seemed to be enjoying their conversation, a silent battle was taking place under the surface. Bridget Graham was a brilliant girl. She's never dazzled by Felix's good looks and status, a woman who could not be swayed easily, ever since long ago. I knew you were always a clever girl, my father's not too happy about it. He said women are better when they're a little dumb and lovable, do you think so, your highness, I do prefer clever women, my, I am flattered, ho ho ho, Bridget laughed with a beautiful smile that everyone could admire, but her golden eyes remained cold. The insincere compliments of Felix would never reach the heart of that clever girl. By the way, does Miss Monica Norton fall into the category of a smart woman for you, your highness? What do you think? Bridget attacked and Felix dodged her with a smile. When Felix smiled at her, as if to say, I'd love to hear your clever thoughts, Bridget lowered her long eyelashes and chose her words. As far as I'm concerned, she's a scholar at heart. If she is given the proper equipment, she would have produced outstanding results, but negotiating in public could be her weak point. 
If your highness wanted to evaluate her, there were other ways to do it without making her an officer of the student council, weren't there? Indeed, the girl in front of him was a clever woman. In these situations, Bridget was able to see things logically rather than emotionally, objectively rather than subjectively. On top of that, Bridget was implying that Monica Norton was unfit to be a student council member. Her point was valid. Monica Norton would be an inadequate person to represent the students. Aside from her paperwork skills, her conduct was too disappointing. Felix lifted the edge of his mouth slightly, narrowing his blue eyes slowly. When you look at her, do you ever think like, Why am I unable to do that? Bridget neither agreed nor denied but simply watched in silence, trying to figure out Felix's true intentions. And Felix gave her a friendly smile. You must have thought it was as if you were looking at the old me, Bridget. Even after her name was called in a friendly manner, Bridget did not lose her fixed smile. Felix then put the cup back in the saucer and stood up. It was still early, but spending his time with her this much should be enough. Thank you for the tea. I enjoyed our time together, Miss Graham. Yes, it's my pleasure. I really have to thank you for sparing your valuable time with me. Your Highness, Bridget, who always smiling thoroughly, was an example of perfect young lady who was faultless in every way. After leaving the tea room, Felix walked away, sighing. She's still a stubborn young lady as always. He might have spoken a little too much. Reflecting, Felix casually glanced out the window before widening his eyes. What is that? He's looking at Glenn who was working on something behind the school building. There's also Monica, Neil, and Lana who seemed to be helping Glenn. As he wondered what they were doing, Glenn set up a stone and placed an iron net on top of it. He lit a fire under the net and began to lay down the meat on the net. Wah! Felix who had intended to return to the dormitory halted and headed quickly for the backyard. V4C6 Silent which become ventilator fan Azareth GT Silent which May 20th, 2021 7 minutes to celebrate their success passing the dance re-examination, Glenn suggested everyone to organizing a party. I'll take care of the place and the food, Glenn thumped his chest. Lana and Neil thought it was going to be a tea party but the event was held in the backyard, with lots of meat prepared. Even without telling them. They all know how this will go. As I thought, grilling meat was the best way to celebrate, said Glenn as he quickly set up the stone and iron grill before starting to grill the meat. Lana was more engrossed in this than expected. As the daughter of a wealthy merchant, she curiously watched Glenn grilling the meat. If Lana didn't stop Glenn, Neil, and Monica, who were easily influenced, would simply watch in silence. I guess these things are easier to make than I thought, I somehow manage it with whatever I have on hand. Although Portable Grill has good performance these days, they are a bit expensive for personal use, the meat was browning on the grill dripping with juice. The juice dripping under the steel mesh crackled as the fire grew stronger. Lana let out a small squeal of surprise, but Glenn flipped the meat as if he was used to it. I think it looks pretty good. After adjusting the heat by moving the wood, Glenn distributed the skewered meat to Monica, Lana, and Neil. He then picked up a skewered meat for himself before holding it up. Okay, since everyone already got your own portions. So to celebrate passing the re-examination for me and Monica. Let's eat. With that, Glenn opened his big mouth and took a bite of the meat. Lana was used to it but Monica and Neil chewed their meat in a perplexed manner. The brown lamb had a slight odor, but the spices made it taste good. Even Monica, who is not a fan of strong-smelling food, found it to be delicious. I, I'm not good with lamb meat, but, I think this is very good. Monica voiced her thoughts in a whisper, and Glenn snorted proudly. Hmm. It was thanks to the secret spice of my Dudley family. You could buy it in our stores, so please come visit us. After hearing Glenn done his advertising with a strong commercial spirit, Neil then gave his honest opinion. In these days, 
obtaining spices have become easier in some areas. As my parents live in the mountains, we still having trouble getting some of it. So, instead of using spice, we tend to use herbs to remove the smell. I also know a lot about herbs, Neil said coquettishly, and Lana stopped eating the skewers then added. From what I heard from my father the amount trading has increased after South Thurndall expanded their second and third ports. Also, since their emperor empire in the east has been replaced, many turmoils have happened while merchants are taking away it in sea attitude. Some of them are staying in this kingdom's ports near the empire, depending on the new policies they created, there is a possibility of merchants flowing to the empire at once. I've heard that the current emperor has innovated a lot of policies. As Monica listened to Lana and Neil's conversation, she thought absent-mindedly. Since the empire lifted the ban on medical magic, many magicians have been flowing to the empire. Similarly, it won't be long before merchants will also flow to the empire. Where people gather, commerce is born. And the empire surely will grow even more in the future. On the other hand, in the Kingdom of Riddle, a conflict has arisen between the central nobles who desperately want to maintain the old system and the local nobles. Furthermore, the factions have been divided into the first, second, and third prince factions. The king sometimes mediated the conflict between the nobles, but for the most part, he remained silent. That sort of power struggle. I dislike it. As one of the seven sages, Monica has been granted the right to meet and speak directly with the king. The seven sages sometimes serve as advisors to the king. In other words, Monica can be directly involved in politics. However, Monica has no interest in power or the future being of the country. The reason why she became one of the seven sages was because of the recommendation of those around her. What Lewis wants me to do, I wonder. If he wanted to guard the second prince, he should have chosen someone better suited for the job. And yet, the fact that he sent such a poorly qualified Monica as his bodyguard leads her to the worst possibility. Don't tell me, by sending me, a useless person, to the second prince, he had planned to make him fall into his destruction. What made Lewis Miller was frightening was because that kind of possibility could happen. As Monica shivered, Remembering Lewis' wicked smile, Glenn glanced at Monica's face. Monica, your hand has stopped eating. You are too small, you need to eat more. Ah, I'm sorry. Monica's hands were sticky with the juice from the meat because she had been absent-mindedly holding the skewers vertically. She hurriedly wiped it off with a handkerchief, then Lana exasperatedly said. Hold the skewer horizontally. If you hold it vertically. The juice will drip down on your hand, I, I will. You seem pretty knowledgeable about it, Lana, my hometown often organizing many festivals, so the culture of eating and drinking is rather well established. Well, many people who grew up in the capital are not like that, though, Monica, who had grown up in the capital, was shocked. And she was not accustomed to the culture of eating outside. What if she were going to ask me further about that? Monica worried inwardly, but Lana didn't pry any further, only looked at the skewer seriously before muttering. I found many roasted chestnuts and fruit stalls around the capital, but not for grilled meat. I think it would be very popular if we set up such stalls here, but the regulations here were very strict, so I don't think it would easy to open some store or stall or something. Monica just recently realized that Lana was not only knowledgeable about popular things but also has a strong business spirit. Such an unexpected side of a person cannot be easily understood until you talk to them in person. In the past, when she was attending the Magician Training Institute, Minerva, Monica refused to socialize or to get to know other people. She even thought that such things were useless. Back then, she had never imagined that the day would come when she would secretly grill meat in the backyard like this and eat it with someone else. Although Lana has a lot of pride, she actually cares for others. She also has a penchant for trendy things. Glenn was a little too free-spirited, 
but he's surprisingly observant and caring, despite his clumsiness. Neil was easily influenced, but he was a kind person who would do everything he could to help when asked. The meat tastes delicious. Monica's mouth broke into a smile and she nibbled on the meat with happiness. Having finished the meat twice as fast as Monica, Glenn then happily began to grill the next batch of meat. Seeing this, Neil exclaimed, You're still going to eat, while widening his eyes. I haven't eaten enough, I think I've had my fill. As Neil held his stomach, Glenn sniffed with excitement. You need to eat more to grow. I had a feeling you did just call me short. You did, didn't you? Glenn finished after being pressed with a blank expression by Nell. Another new side of him was revealed. Looking at their exchange, Monica and Lana were laughing. Hey, you look like you're having fun. Everyone held their tongue and looked back at the voice. Standing there unaccompanied was the student council president, Felix R. Cridill. Neil's face paled quickly. Um, president, you know, we're just, geez, brazenly violating school rules, with two two student council members at that. When Felix let out a lamenting sigh, Glenn bravely held up a skewer and countered. There's no school rule that says you can't grill meat in the back of the school building. According to Chapter 3 of the school rules, it is prohibited to cause disturbance to the scenery of the school building. What does it mean to cause disturbance to the scenery? Ignoring Glenn's question, Felix added with a smile. Also, if you're going to create a fire outside of the designated areas, you need to apply a permit to the student council. Then, since you, the president, is here, I guess there's no problem. President. Please grant us permission. It was refreshing to see how he kept his own pace. As everyone looking around in suspense, Felix folded his arms fixing his gaze on Glenn. You're supposed to apply for those things with proper forms at least one day in advance, is that so? Oh, would you like one too, President? With a fluid gesture, Glenn offered Felix a skewered meat. How fearless. While Neil and Monica gasped, Felix stared at the skewered meat, and, yet, yeah, I think I'll have some, picked up that skewer. You are going to eat it, Neil screamed in a small voice. Monica seconded. Monica had thought Felix would throw the meat away in front of Glenn, but contrary to her expectations, Felix dexterously took a bite of the meat on the skewer. Unlike Monica. He didn't hold the skewer vertically letting the juice drip on his hands. Yep, it's delicious. I like the way it's spiced up. After finishing the meat on the skewer, Felix looked at Neil and Monica, who were stunned, and gave them a wink. Now I'm an accomplice. Will you keep quiet about this? Neil and Monica nodded furiously in silence. Glenn smiled pleasantly. There's still more, so feel free to have some. I'd also like to thank you for helping me dance. Oh, by the way, do you want to invite the vice president too? Don't do that, please, Monica and Neil shouted in unison. If Sarah Lashley, a very sensitive and nerve-wracking person, were to see this situation, he would obviously yell at them with bloodshot eyes. In order to prevent the smell of grilling meat and smoke from flowing into the school building, Monica secretly adjusted the direction of the wind with her no-chant magic. For now, she wanted to spend this happy time undisturbed. Characters Introduction to Azeroth GT Silent Witch May 21, 2021 2 minutes Characters Up Until Now Format Name, Age Main Cast Monica Norton, 17, the youngest among the seven sages, Silent Witch, with her no-chant spell user. Extremely bad at socializing. Bad at physical activities. Nero, cannot be determined. Monica's familiar. A multi-talented black cat that's sensitive to mana, can transform into a human, and making a sexy pose. Student council members Felix Ark Riddle, 18, the second prince of Riddle Kingdom. Student council president at Serendia Academy. Clouded with many mysterious things. Cyril Ashley, 18, the, adoptive, eldest son of the house of Marcus Hyen. 
Student Council Vice President. Ice Spell User. Had a constitution that easily absorbs mana. Bridget Graham, 18, the daughter of Marcus Shelbury. Secretary of the Student Council. A talented woman who is good at languages. Felix's childhood friend. Elliot Howard, 18, the eldest son of Count Dasrevi. Secretary of the Student Council. A young man who is obsessed with his status. Even you hate him, please don't take his droopy eyes. Noel Gray Maywood, 17, the eldest son of Bron Maywood. General Affairs Manager at Student Council. A good-natured boy which easily influenced by others. He's kind but short is his taboo word. Characters at the Academy Lana Kalit, 17, the daughter of a baron. Her father was a wealthy merchant and knew all the latest trends. Like his father, she has a strong business spirit. Glenn Dudley, 17, a transfer student who entered the school at the same time as Monica. He is the son of a butcher who is an apprentice magician. He seems to have a scary master. Isabel Norton, 16, the daughter of Count Kerbeck. A collaborator of Monica's, she is constantly training to become a villainess. Other characters will, late 20, Felix's personal servant. Usually in lizard form, hiding in the pocket of Felix's uniform. Lewis Miller, 27. One of the Seven Sages, Barrier Magician, Shuppy Man who's soon to be dead. Rosalia Miller, 27, Shuppy Man's Wife. Having a headache from her husband's overprotectiveness. Lindbergh Field, cannot be determined, a higher spirit of the wind who signed a contract with Lewis. A beautiful woman in a mage uniform. Had weird vocabulary and common sense. Emmanuel Darwin Jewel Magician. One of the seven sages who appeared in name only. According to Lewis, he's a gold-digging baboon geezer.